What is up guys? Brendan Hancock here with another episode of Groove Subaru Today. And today we're taking out for a little test drive of the 2018 Subaru Outback, in particular the 50th anniversary edition. So if you guys haven't seen our video where we go into a little bit more detail on some of the things that are different on this car than the typical limited Outback, feel free to check out that video if you don't mind. A lot of helpful information there for you, but today we're just gonna kind of take it out for its spin, sort of see what it's like to drive. Now, this is the all-new 2018 Outback. They did do some modifications to it. I would say it's a light refresh. It's not a full new body style. This is on the same uh, you know, chassis and everything as the 2015 and onward. So we're still uh, a little bit of time still remaining on this platform, but they've made a lot of modifications to the suspension and steering ratio, which have made it uh, even more comfortable to drive. Now, this is the 50th anniversary edition. They made 1,050 of these Outbacks, and they're all in the nice heritage blue metallic, which in my opinion, kind of resembles a little bit of the twilight blue if you're familiar with our lineup. Now they did make the 50th anniversary editions for all of the cars in our lineup. So we have the Crosstrek, Legacy, and Preza. And we actually did videos on both the Legacy and Preza, so make sure to check those out too if you're interested in those cars. But all of the 50th anniversary editions are gonna be in this Heritage Blue Metallic, and they're all kind of in the top of the line in terms of amenities and features that you get. So this, in terms of the features you get on this car, other than some you know badging, color changes, things like that, it's really gonna be you know, a 2.5i limited with option package 24. Now they call this option package 50 because it's the 50th anniversary edition, but feature wise, everything else is the same. So you will get the nice leather trimmed upholstery inside. You have the leather uh, wrapped steering wheel, leather wrapped shift knob, the wood grain trim, everything you'd expect with the limited trim. You also are gonna get the eyesight option package as well as the moonroof and also the navigation system that comes with this nice eight inch touchscreen infotainment system from Starlink. So this is new for the Outback. The 2017 Outbacks did not have this nice eight inch screen. Previously, the highest, uh, you know, the biggest one you could get was a seven inch and they've come a long ways with this. It very much resembles that of an iPhone up here. So it's gonna come standard with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And since this is the loaded one, you will get the navigation standard on there as well. Uh, but the definition, the graphics, the light, everything is so much better on this. And even if you had the 6.5 inch touchscreen version of this on, for example, a base Outback, it's still gonna come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which means not only do you have, you know, you can send and receive text messages, make phone calls, but you can actually pull up navigation on your screen. The navigation you get on this one though is gonna come from TomTom. Tom, and uh, however, the traffic information is still gonna come from Sirius XM as it did previously in 2017. Now, in terms of the driving experience, like I said, this, the changes that they've made are mostly to the suspension tuning and the steering ratio. It's a little bit tighter steering ratio. It's by no means a WRX or STI, but it is a little bit more driver feedback. Um, if I you know, move the steering wheel about an inch each both sides, I do go back and forth a little bit, but it's not drastic. Um, but most of it is gonna be in the suspension tuning and that is gonna be much nicer over the bumps. They've also done a lot more to reduce road noise as well as wind noise. So we've always had the noise insulating front windshield, but they've actually added both the, the driver and passenger windows in the front are now noise insulated as well. So it definitely does a great job at keeping out that wind noise and road noise. Now it's, this car is not on the global platform yet. I'm, I'm assuming in the future it will be, uh, but they're definitely, the feel of the car is going more towards that, that nice, quiet, comfortable driving experience. Now this one in particular is the 2.5i. You can also get the 50th anniversary edition in the 3.6 model. We actually do have one of those that is being sold today actually. So uh, a lot of people ask me, oh, do I need the six cylinder? Do I need the 2.5? You know, I'm not always necessarily the person to ask because if they made a twin turbo 12 cylinder boxer engine, I would say that's the best option. You should get that. Uh, Cause I just love fast cars, but truthfully, you know, the way that the CVT transmission is designed, it is designed to be very nice and peppy in and around town. Really the only place you notice the difference between the 2.5i and the 3.6 is flooring it onto the highway and things like that. You gain 300 pounds in towing capacity, so it's not drastic. Although I would assume if you are planning on towing, you'd probably be more comfortable with the six cylinder just given that extra almost 100 horsepower. The difference is 175 in the four cylinder for horsepower, 256 in the six cylinder. 
Now, this is, as I mentioned, kind of a fully loaded limited, so you are gonna get the entire eyesight option package. So you will get the blind spot detection, rear cross traffic alert. You'll have the cameras up front here for adaptive cruise control, lane keep, pre-collision braking, all of that stuff. So my favorite feature of all of that is definitely the adaptive cruise. And what I do, just like regular cruise, just tap my little cruise button and hit set when I get up to the speed that I want. And then you'll hear that little beep, and that's because it locked onto the car that's in front of me. So you have the ability to adjust the distance that it keeps between you and the car in front. So even though I have my cruise set to 38 miles an hour, I'm now down to 34 miles an hour because it's cutting my throttle. So it's not riding my brakes here. It's just cutting my throttle to make sure that I maintain a nice safe distance between what I believe to be a police officer that is directly ahead of us. So that's nice because you don't want to crash into a police officer. That's no bueno. Now, the, a lot of people ask me, oh, do I need to have my adaptive cruise control on in order for my you know, emergency braking scenario to take place with the pre-collision braking? And the answer for that is no. The difference, however, is that right now I've got a nice, you know, slow like cutting of my throttle. It brakes nice and easy for me because it, it knows when you're using adaptive cruise control that you're relying on the technology to kind of do a lot of the work for you here. So with pre-collision braking, it's very much giving you the benefit of the doubt that you're paying attention and until the very last second when it realizes you are not and therefore will give you an audible and visual warning. It'll be like dee -dee 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 -dee, and slams on the brakes. So unless you turn that off, which you can do on the little control panel over by my left knee here, it's going to always be on even if you're not using the adaptive cruise control. There's also a feature called lane keep assist, which right now will probably not work for us because we're not going fast enough. But you do need to go at least 40 miles an hour. And the difference between lane keep assist and lane departure warning, lane departure warning, which is always on by default, is that the Lane departure warning will just beep at you and let you know if you're swerving out of your lane, whereas lane keep assist will actually physically adjust your power steering and keep you in the center of the lane if you're going over 40 miles an hour. I'm gonna turn this off because we're coming up to a light here and there's no one in front of us. Also, there's a police officer there, so I don't wanna do anything too drastic here. Now, they have made some refinements to the 2018 Outback versus the 2017 inside of the interior. Most of it, they've added some, uh, some of the satin chrome finish up here next to the wood grain. They've also added the silver stitching that we're seeing here throughout, which just kind of blends it all together quite nicely. We are seeing that silver stitching happening on the, you know, the new cars that are on the global platform, like the Crosstrek and the Impreza in the higher trim levels, like the, this Limited. So they're kind of trying to bring everything sort of together there. Also, one thing I've noticed, they have changed the mirrors too, where the blind spot detection is now inside of the housing unit here. So you don't even have to really look. It's just gonna be there for you automatically. Now, one of the best things about the Subaru Outback, which makes it by far our number one selling car, is not only do you have tons and tons of space in here, you've got heated seats in the back, you've got vents back there, outlets for USB. So it's an excellent, excellent family car. It's safe but it also has 8.7 inches of ground clearance. And to give you guys an idea, the Nissan Xterra has 9.1 inches of ground clearance, and that's a car that's taken off-road all the time. So this car was actually rated as, I think by Road & Track, if I'm not mistaken, as one of the top 10 off-road worthy vehicles that are not the Jeep Wrangler. And it also, by Consumer Reports, was rated as the number one performing SUV in the snow. So that beat out, that included the Wrangler, that included all the luxury cars like the Porsche and everything like that, the Audi Q5, and this one finished number one. So you get a very, very nice level of elegance, a good amount of safety features in here, but it's also gonna be excellent performer in the snow with plenty of room for your family and keeps them nice and safe as well. With this EyeSight option package, this car rates at an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the highest safety rating you could possibly get. So my first car, a little fun fact, was a 1997 Outback. Had a little hood scoop on the front. Its name was Bennigan. It was a good friend of mine. And uh, they have definitely, definitely come a long ways since then, that is for sure. Now the Outback is definitely our number one seller by far. If you guys have not you know, taking one of these out for a spin, I highly recommend it. Obviously, there's a very limited supply of specifically the 50th anniversary editions, but we have tons and tons of limiteds in stock, which amenity-wise would be all the same. You just have a little bit more options in terms of the colors and things that you get here. So if you guys have not done so already, you know, give us a call, schedule your test drive if you live in the area. And if you liked this video, please click on the subscribe button and subscribe to our channel. We have come so far in these last two years, all thanks to you guys, and we really appreciate it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you found this video helpful, and we'll see you guys next time on Groove Subaru Today. Take care.